You can't build a house without a hammer. And while I know how fun it can be to obsess over the best tools for the job, at the end of the day, all of that obsessing keeps us from our larger goal, creating things. So today, I want to give you a tour of my approach to podcasting equipment. This will be one part gear recommendation and three parts philosophy with the aim of helping you reduce the amount of time that you spend on finding tools and increase your time using them. So if you're ready, let's dig in. Hey there, I'm Aaron and I make podcasts. Over the past seven years, I've built an empire of a dozen shows and run an entire production company dedicated to making them. But even after all of this time, I still record all of my parts in the home studio I set up years ago. And trust me, it is definitely not fancy. So you want to make a podcast and you want it to sound good, but you don't know where to start. Well, thankfully, I have some tips to help you get your feet on the ground so that you can start running faster. Now, I'm not going to give you specific mic recommendations, I'm sorry, but I will help you understand the broad strokes of what options are out there. And I know how confusing it can be to hear someone recommend a particular microphone, look it up on Amazon, and then scratch your head wondering about all the terminology and the weird parts. Hopefully, I can simplify all of that for you. So let's start with the basics, how you connect the mic to your computer. Now, most people who set out to make a podcast are probably going to do it from their computer. Most of my shows are pre-written, so from the very beginning, I am sitting in front of my computer, and most of that doesn't change when I go to record it. In general, you'll find two types of connections on microphone options out there. Some of them plug right into your computer with a USB cable. If you have a free USB port on your device, you are good to go. You'll just need to plug in the mic, open your recording software, and then make sure that shiny new microphone is selected as the source for your audio input. Now, USB mics get the job done, so I'm not going to express any prejudice here. The best mic for your project is always going to be the mic that you can afford. So use what you've got but some of the best microphones out there use a different connection method, the XLR cable. This is the sort of connection that you would find on stage at a music event. XLR cables do a lot of heavy lifting. They carry power to your mic. They bring the sound back to your recording setup. But XLR mics need something between them and your computer for the process to work. Think of it like an adapter that has ports to receive the XLR cable and then a USB port to connect to your computer. Although good audio interfaces do much more than just adapt your cables. You see, some microphones need a bit of electricity flowing through them to work well. It's called phantom power, and without it, they tend to have trouble picking up sound. Any recordings that you make without phantom power would sound super quiet. And while you could turn up the volume in production, that also turns up the noise of the room you're recording in. So you'll get all that hiss and crackle that you don't want. Using phantom power allows your microphone to pick up more of your voice with less effort and leave all that other noise behind. Along with using a microphone and making sure that it's plugged into your computer using the right methods, there are other more universal things that you need to understand. For starters, what's your microphone resting on? Back in the earliest days of making lore, I used to have my microphone sitting on my desk right next to my elbows. And every time I moved my arms, those sounds would get captured by the recording. So whatever mic you do buy, I highly recommend two accessories to help you perform better with them. The first is a boom arm. This is typically a two segment arm that clamps down on your desktop with the spot at the other end for the mic. It's great because it allows you to adjust where the mic is, but gets it off the desk or table. The second thing I recommend is a shock mount. Think of this as an adapter between the end of the boom arm and the mic itself. A shock mount holds the microphone in a sort of suspended rubber cage, like shock absorbers on a car. And this way, whenever you accidentally bump your desk, any of the vibrations that do travel up the boom arm will get stopped by the shock mount. And that means no more bumps in your recordings. Aside from those, most mics will probably come with some sort of foam cover or windscreen, and I highly recommend using it. Windscreens have a way of softening all those harsh sounds like S's and P's, which are sometimes called plosives. And as far as physical tools go, I think that about covers it. Your budget and your needs will guide you to the best choice for you, but please don't get stuck in the rabbit hole of audio equipment research. And definitely don't ask for help on Facebook. You will get drowned in the answers. Look for the simplest setup to get you started. 
If the podcast thing takes off for you down the road, it's incredibly easy to upgrade your tools. But always, don't let your tools get in the way of being creative. Recording equipment is one part of the equation, and it can get expensive very quickly. But the other side of the coin is a lot easier to manage. You need a good recording space. Now first, a physics lesson. Have you ever had fun with light? Maybe guiding the reflection off the face of your watch into the eyes of someone else in the room, or bouncing the beam of a flashlight off of a mirror and watching where it goes? When you do that, you're playing with one of the qualities of light, namely that it bounces off of reflective surfaces. And if you can understand light, you can understand sound. The noises you make with your mouth want to behave just like a flashlight beam. You can aim your voice, and you can hear it reflect off walls and furniture. Back in those early days of making lore, my office was this triangular-shaped attic space with horsehair plaster walls, a hardwood floor, and a lot of hard IKEA furniture. Everything, and I mean everything, sounded horrible in that space. It was a room of constant echoes. Of course, back then, I didn't understand how much of that reflection was showing up on my recordings. The first few episodes of Lore had a very tinny sound to them, thanks to those reflective surfaces. But I learned my lessons, and I made a very cheap upgrade to my recording space. Moving blankets. You've seen them before, I'm sure. They're big, usually orange and black, and they're padded and quilted to protect furniture. But they are also great at stopping sound from bouncing around. So I built what is essentially a PVC pipe frame the size of a shower stall to which I clamped thick quilted moving blankets to the top and all the sides. And it's inside that homemade blanket fort that I still, to this day, record one of the top podcasts in the world. Honestly, I feel like I'm cheating because it was so simple, so easy, and so very cheap. For about a hundred bucks, I created a recording space that leveled up my audio quality in a way that no expensive microphone could have managed. Now, you might not have space in your home where you can leave a blanket fort standing all the time, complete with a shelf inside for a computer and a microphone but you can use another soft space that most homes have, a closet. Especially if that closet has a lot of clothing hanging around inside it. Just drag a couple of chairs into your coat closet and use one for your equipment and one for your butt. I know it will feel like you're playing hide and seek, but moving your recording space from out in the open into a closet filled with clothing or coats is going to transform your sound. Trust me. Now, before I wrap things up for this session, just a couple more pointers that I think you'll find helpful. Number one, buy a good pair of headphones that fit all the way over your ears. For smaller headphones or earbuds, the sound has a tendency to leak out, which means there's a chance that the microphone will pick up that on the recording, and no one wants that. So a pair of over-the-ear headphones keep that from happening. You'll still get to monitor your audio, but it won't affect your recording quality. And second, if your recording space is always going to be in flux, maybe due to travel or just a busy, crowded home, consider using a small, portable recording device like a Zoom H6. They cost a bit more money, but they allow you to plug in all sorts of XLR microphones, they can run on battery power, and they can even provide phantom power to your mic if that's needed. And all of that while recording to an SD card instead of a bulky laptop. And that's it for today. Before you go, make sure you click the subscribe button to never miss a future episode, and if you click the bell icon, you'll get alerted the moment they arrive. This video is part of a larger podcasting basics series, which you can find in the playlist section of my channel. If you find them helpful, click the thumbs up, and if you have questions or need clarifications, drop those in the comments below. And until next time, go be creative.